How's it going everybody and welcome back to our VMware NSXT series where we're building the data center. In this video we're going to be taking a look at understanding the logical breakdown of how we're going to be building out vCenter server from the ground up. It's important to understand how this is going to come into play so I did my best to build a topological view of what we're going to be building out so that we can see what that all looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way and we're going to start diving into the details of how all this stuff comes into play. So as you can see, I have my physical host here. This is a Cisco UCSC220 M3 server. And on it, we have our devices. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull up, this is the server, right? This is what we have been working on. I may have to, there we go. I need to relaunch it real quick. I'll show you the ESXi host as well, just so we have a understanding of how it all comes together. I'll be bouncing back and forth between the two. So with uh, it's got 16 CPUs, 256 gigs of RAM. I've got 32 gigahertz of processor speed, uh, processor, all that good stuff. Now I'm going to jump back over here to our PDF. So what we have, let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit as what we've got going on. So I'm going to go from left to right. So on the left hand side we have, um, we've, we're going to be deploying vCenter server. Right, we're going to deploy that from our jump box. The jump box is going to, I'm going to copy that from my local network to the jump box. And then from there, we're going to open up the installer and we're going to deploy vCenter server. vCenter server is going to get installed on our ESXi host right here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. It's already been done. I've already taken care of it. I'm just doing a video preview of what it's going to look like. So this is data center one vCenter server appliance. So I've got that. So this the appliance has already been deployed and it's got its network adapter inside of the lab port group that's uh, set up as a trunk link. And it's going to connect to the rest of this environment. Once we start building this out, what we're going to be essentially doing here is we're going to create a data center, data center one, DC one. And what that's going to do, actually, I'm sorry, this is this big orangey brown rectangle is vCenter server. And inside of vCenter server, in the smaller purple, pinkish box, we have DC1. DC1 is going to be our data center. So from a logical perspective, this is the next uh, step in the process. You have Once you've got vCenter server deployed, then you create a data center inside of the vCenter server. You can have multiple data centers that are managed by a single vCenter appliance or vCenter instance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to join the ESXi hosts, 1 through 6, to my deployment. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to actually get the hosts where they need to be and all that good stuff that goes along with it. I am going to create three clusters. I'm going to create DC1 compute cluster one, comp being compute, and I'm going to join my ESXi host to that cluster. When you join ESXi host to a cluster, when you deploy the cluster, they automatically get added to the cluster in maintenance mode. So we'll have to take them out of maintenance mode. Once they're in maintenance mode, then we'll be able to interact with them. So we're going to have our three hosts in cluster one. Clusters are required if you plan on doing any NSXT. Now, there's going to be a number of network adapters that we're going to be uh, tying in, which all of those will be tied to V switches, vSphere standard switch. So right now, that's just basically how I have them notated right now. Same thing with Compute Cluster 2, we're going to join a single ESXi host to that cluster so that it, when we go to deploy NSXT, I can show you what it looks like to deploy NSXT to a single host as well at the cluster level. That's why I have it set up the way that I do. Now if we continue moving down here, we have host uh, 5 and 6, we're going to be in Edge Cluster 1 and there's going to be a number of uplinks and we're going to have connectivity set up. Even though I don't have, I won't actually have an, a dedicated NIC for vMotion, I'll be adding vMotion to the VM kernel port group for management so we can do vMotion over the management network. So um, that'll work here in between these guys. Um, I will be enabling vMotion between the compute clusters so that we can do vMotion back and forth between those two. So what that will mean is when you have vMotion set up on two different port groups, which means they're going to be in two different subnets, we won't be able to do uh, any inter 
VLAN V motion. In other words, we won't be able to do a V motion from edge cluster one to the compute cluster. That won't be supported unless we were to turn on routing on the V motion or on the management networks. We won't be able to do any inter uh, layer three V motion. It'll be all layer two V motion. So that's basically what will end up happening. Now, once we have all that stuff squared off, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Just to help under everybody understand how this is being built, from the right to the left, we have the physical environment here. The, on the right-hand side of the topology, we have my physical Cisco 3750X with a couple of SBIs and a couple of VLANs, then VMNIC0, and there's a couple. all those VLANs are being trunked down to the... VSwitch 0, which is the main VSwitch on the host that I created, and then I created lab VSwitch, and then created lab port group to sit inside the lab VSwitch. Remember, the switch is no different than a physical box. The port groups are going to be basically the VLANs that you're creating in the switch in order to provide logical segmentation. Now, on this connectivity here, I've got the two CSRs deployed, and they're going to have connections into each one of the, the uplink. So CSR1 is going to connect to uh, VLAN 20, CSR2 is going to connect to VLAN 21, and that's going to allow us to provide the network connectivity. So I'll form an OSPF adjacency on the CSRs up to the 3750. I'll get a default route. I'll make sure to take the, uh, the sub-interfaces that I'll create for the, the, the VMs that we're going to be deploying later on. They'll have default gateways, and we're going to do a shared gateway between the two of them using HSRP. So that's going to be all squared away. The storage is already in place and ready to go. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing. So once we get this all up and running, our compute cluster will be, our two compute clusters will be built and everything will be good to go that way. So that is essentially what, from a logical perspective, what it's going to look like from a workflow perspective. So any traffic, any VMs that are sitting on any one of my hosts in the compute cluster will flow through v, lab v switch to the CSR 1000V will be their default gateway and then the CSR has a default route pointing towards the layer 3 switch, the 3750X. That will allow VM sitting inside this environment to reach the internet. So we will be able to ping Google. I'll have DHCP set up on these two routers in order to provide DHCP to any of the virtual machines that I deploy and all that good stuff like that. So if you have any questions please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already done so, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.